So what's the difference between warm grays and cool grays? Well, in this video, we'll explain the difference between warm grays and cool grays, when to use warm and cool grays, and how you can mix your own warm and cool grays. What makes a gray warm and what makes a gray cool? To understand this fully, we must take a quick look at color theory. Color is such a vast subject. Because it is so vast, it can cause confusion for some. It doesn't help that some manufacturers of art materials name colors in a manner that makes things more complex than it should be. I receive a lot of questions about color theory, and with good reason. There's a lot of confusing information out there. But color theory doesn't have to be as complex as it may seem. If we think about colors as simple hues and their positioning on the color wheel, it makes things a whole lot easier. Let's first take a look at the color wheel and identify the warm colors and the cool colors. Perhaps you're already familiar with warm and cool colors, but if not, let's review. The color wheel is the color spectrum bent into a circle. Certain color relationships occur as a result of this bending. The warm colors are colors that we associate with things that are hot. For example, the sun is hot and we know that its color is yellow or orange. Fire is also hot and again its color is yellow or orange. Therefore, yellow and orange are warm colors. Cool colors are colors that we associate with things that are cold. For example, ice and snow is cold and the color of the shadows found in ice or snow is blue. Therefore, blue is a cool color. This concept is referred to as color temperature. Cool colors range from blue-green to blue-purple. Warm colors range from yellow-green to red-purple. Green and purple can be considered transition colors. If a purple has more red in it, then it may be considered a warm color. If it has more blue in it, it may be considered a cool color. Green is another transition color. If it has more blue in it, then it can be considered a cool color. But if it has more yellow in it, then it can be considered a warm color. Okay, now that we've got that out of the way, let's take a look at how color temperature affects the color gray. Gray is considered a neutral color, but as you'll see in a moment, it may not be as neutral as you might expect. Neutral colors are not found on the color wheel. Other neutral colors include black, white, and some browns, although most browns lean towards a color such as orange. Gray is mixed by combining white and black. White is not mixed, it's absolutely pure. But many blacks are mixed or can be mixed, and this is how we manipulate the gray that is produced. The key is in the black. Black is a strong color. In fact, it's so strong that many artists prefer to mix their own black. This gives us control over the color temperature as well as the intensity, and often leads to a more natural looking black that doesn't overpower an image. Black is most easily mixed by combining a blue with a brown. Darker browns and darker blues clearly work the best. For example, when mixing colored pencils, for example, from the Prismacolor line, indigo blue and dark umber create a wonderful black. If you mix a black with a heavier concentration of blue, the result is a cooler black. If you mix a black with a heavier concentration of brown, the result is a warmer black. Blue is clearly a cool color, while brown leans towards orange, a warm color. Brown can almost be considered as a dark value or a shade of orange. Now, if we mix a cooler black with a white, the result is, you guessed it, a cooler gray. If we take a warmer black and mix it with white, the result is a warmer gray. You can create a whole multitude of grays by using various pigments of blue and brown and mixing that mixture with white. Here's a look at several different grays based on their color temperature. Now this works with any medium that you choose to work with. Here's a look at warm and cool grays mixed with watercolor. In this case, Prussian blue has been combined with burnt umber. In the first example, Prussian blue dominates the mixture, resulting in a cooler gray. In the second example, burnt umber dominates the mixture, resulting in a warmer gray. Here's a look at warm and cool grays mixed with pastels. In this case, a darker blue is layered over the top of a darker brown. This mixture is gently blended before layering a light layer of white over the top. The result is a cool gray. In the second example, the darker brown is layered over dark blue, blended, and then layered over with a light application of white. The result here is a warm gray. 
Color intensity is affected when we mix gray with a hue. For example, if we mix blue with a gray, the result is a less intense version of the blue. The color becomes more dull as we add more gray to it. Some colored pencil manufacturers like Prismacolor produce gray colored pencils of warm and cool varieties of various intensities. They also do this with their markers. The intensity of the gray is expressed as a percentage. Here are the cool grays that Prismacolor produces. Cool gray 10%, cool gray 20%, cool gray 30%, cool gray 50%, cool gray 70%, and cool gray 90%. They also produce the same intensities of grays as warm grays as well. Here's a comparison of some of the cool grays. As you can see, the intensity of the gray increases based on the percentage designated. Now you might be wondering when you should use warm grays and when you should use cool grays. Well, there aren't any rules regarding which grays you should choose. Instead, you should first closely observe your subject and try to evaluate the gray that you're seeing. If it looks more like it's a warm gray, then it makes sense to use a warm gray. And if the gray that you see appears cooler, then it makes sense to use a cooler gray. Now, we can combine both warm and cool grays within the same image. For example, both warm and cool grays were used in this colored pencil drawing of an elephant. Sometimes it makes more sense to use a cooler gray for areas of shadow. In this colored pencil drawing of a frog, warm grays were used on the body, but cool grays were used for the cast shadow underneath. This simply creates more contrast between the subject and its cast shadow. So now you hopefully understand the difference between warm and cool grays and have a better idea of when you should use a warm or cool gray. If you're still unsure, if it feels right for your image, then it probably is right. Remember, have fun, be creative, and just make art.